This is the control room of KFYR-TV. It is here that productions are recorded, edited, and eventually aired. The equipment necessary for such purposes, and those pieces of equipment that refine them, such as the special effects generator, are complex and very expensive, but worth the investment if one wishes to deliver the best product. Let's take a look at the electronic miracles that make the illusionary world of television a reality. One of the most basic units for any television operation is the videotape recorder. These are two-inch quad reel-to-reel -reel color recorders. They're called quadruplex or quad machines because of the four heads which record and play back the video signal. These recorders can operate in either a high band or low band mode. The high band refers to operation in a higher frequency range, which means a better picture. At KFYR-TV, the low band mode is used primarily for making copies or dubs of tapes for stations without high band machines. Operation is as simple as a reel-to-reel -reel audio tape recorder. There are play, stop, rewind, fast forward, record, and standby or ready buttons. Most of these are self-explanatory. The standby function rotates the heads, getting them up to playing speed without moving the tape. A digital counter indicates where you are in the tape. To record from any source, be it studio camera, slide, another VTR, Simply press record and play simultaneously and zero the counter. After recording, press stop. Then rewind the tape to the zero mark, press play, and watch the results. This quad machine is fitted with an editor. This enables inserting of material over an existing signal and a stop and go type production. Each commercial produced need not be a perfect 30-second performance. Sections can be recorded one at a time and edited together into a complete product. In addition to the two reel-to-reel -reel recorders, we also have a two-inch video cart recorder player. The advantage of the cartridge is its ease of operation. The tape is contained in this box-like cassette. Once inserted into the machine, it can be played, rewound, and cued for another playback at the touch of a button. Up to 24 cards can be loaded at one time, and with two recording playback units, they can be played in any order with virtually no dead air in between. With a lockup time of 200 milliseconds, the start of the tape and playback is almost instantaneous. And with the automatic sequence computer, eight commercial breaks of up to five spots each can be programmed in advance. This makes running the board and airing of commercials much easier and much cleaner. Another format in use in the control room is the three-quarter inch video cassette. This machine is used for playback of tapes shot with portable video equipment. Controls are similar to the reel-to-reel -reel machines. This is the editing bench where the three-quarter inch cassettes are edited. The editor operates both machines. To perform an edit, the edit points on both tapes are selected and both machines are queued. To rehearse the edit, simply press the preview button and the editor will show the edit without performing it. Changes can then be made as necessary. To perform the edit, press Auto Edit, and the editor will perform the edit as rehearsed and within a one-frame accuracy. To see the edit, press Review, and the work just completed will be played back. Even with all the new video innovations, many commercials and programs are aired on film from this setup called the Film Chain or Film Island. This one consists of two 16-millimeter film projectors, two 35-millimeter slide carousels or drums, a multiplexer, and a television film or telecine camera. The multiplexer is a series of mirrors that direct the light from the film or slide projector into the telecine camera. The film island can be operated locally by the film man or remotely by the board operator. This small panel provides for remote start and stop of all VTRs as well as the film projectors and slides. This area is the brain of the TV control room. All equipment is linked to each other through this board called the switcher. 
It has three major functions. Selection of a video source from several inputs, transition between two video sources, and creation of special effects. Like all switchers, the operational controls are arranged in rows of buttons called buses. The preview function makes possible the viewing of a picture or special effect without having it go on the air. Program controls bypass all preview channels to put the video source on the air. This switcher has two mix effects systems. The mix buttons enable transitions between two sources, such as a cut, a dissolve, and a fade. With effects, it's possible to chroma key, that is, electronically replace one color, usually blue, with another video source, and perform wipes in different patterns, with soft edges or borders of various widths. Modulation can be used to create interesting patterns for use as backgrounds. Any two video sources can be used to create an effect. Two cameras, a camera and VTR, slide in camera, any combination of two sources that gives the desired effect. It is perhaps this special effects generator that gives one the versatility in production to create a unique commercial that will best suit the client's wants and needs. This is important. Television is, after all, first and foremost, a business. Of course, for each video source, there's a separate preview monitor. There's also a program monitor, a color line monitor, and a color off-air monitor. Graphics is an important aspect of any production. In recent years, studio cards have more and more been replaced by the character generator. This unit creates letters, numbers, and punctuation marks in a variety of colors, sizes, and fonts, or letter styles. This particular model is capable of 24 different fonts in both upper and lower cases, and in 64 colors. In addition, it can matte, border, outline, drop shadow, italicize print, generate its own color background, crawl lines, roll them, and flash all or part of a message. To prepare the material, select the desired font and color. A cursor shows the exact location where the first word will begin. The cursor can be moved anywhere on the screen. The message is typed and displayed on the preview screen. With the message Compose keys, lines and characters can be centered, shifted to the left or right, up or down, added or deleted without redoing the entire message. Erase display clears the screen. Fonts and colors can be mixed at will. When the message is set, it is recorded on a disk. It can then be recalled at any time by selecting the proper message number and hitting the Read button. The message now displayed can be aired or recorded. Television is an oral as well as a visual medium. The audio console selects and amplifies the incoming sound signals from various inputs. This console has 18 inputs. These include network, the videotape machines, film projectors, studio microphones, and audio cartridge machines. Audio carts are recorded in a separate booth and are only played back in the control room. Each input can be aired on the program channel or kept in-house on the addition and utility channels. These buttons send the audio signal to the VTR where it will be recorded. Volume is controlled by the use of sliding potentiometers or slide pots and is read on the volume unit or VU meter. There's a separate VU meter for each of the program, addition, and utility channels. The volume is correct if the needle oscillates around the middle of the scale and peaks into the red zone. The audio console also provides for the mixing of various inputs, such as a separate voice track and music, that need to be recorded on one videotape. And that's a brief look at the control room at KFYR-TV. The equipment may appear complex and difficult to operate, but if the operator understands the function and fundamentals of operation and invests the time in working with it, mastery of even the most sophisticated units is not far away.